everyone. I'm Gordon Half, technology evangelist at Red Hat, and I'm here with my colleague Lucy today to talk about security. Lucy, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy Kerner. Uh, I'm the Security Global Strategy and Evangelism Director at Red Hat. Uh, my lead security thought leadership, the technical go to market strategy, messaging and evangelism for um, security across uh, Red Hat's entire portfolio globally. Lucy, I'm sure some of our viewers are very familiar with open source software. Others may be a little less so. So I'd like to get one thing out of the way up front. How can open source be secure if potential attackers can scour the source code looking for weaknesses and anyone can generally submit changes to that code? Yeah, great question, Gordon. So, um, you know, open source, you know, brings that those advantages, um, you know, such as access to the latest innovation, transparency, collaboration, cost savings, you know, potentially higher quality software since more eyes are on the code. But you really need to put safeguards in place to consume open source securely, you know, especially now, like organizations are consuming cloud technologies um, more and more, right? And oftentimes this means giving developers more and more control of the full development life cycle. You know, they're able to download images from, directly from the internet, or you know, they're able to use container security tooling directly, you know, things like this, spin up Amazon instances. But developers aren't security experts, so this can lead to challenges if mitigations aren't in place. Um, and it's those security gates if they're not in place. So, for example, uh, about three years ago, uh, tainted crypto mining uh, container images from Docker Hub were downloaded. Um, uh, I think it was like over five million times or even more recently, the solar winds attack. And so many companies decide to download and use open source software. In fact, that that's a huge part of um, their, you know, the software they use. Um, you know, they want to save time and uh, money. And as opposed to buying commercial software based on open source projects, um, they figure they may figure that, you know, what they give up in security, they're getting um for they're getting that uh, make making it up with cost savings and agility. You know, so while that may be true, if you decide to do that, make sure you have you do the following. So number one, you know, have a method for inventorying the scope of open source usage in your organization. You know, have the ability to access the security impact of each vulnerability. You know, have the resources in place to quickly find and fix vulnerabilities and quickly um, uh, update all the affected systems as the latest version um, that includes the fix. Uh, make sure you know like which vulnerabilities does matters and which ones are like security researchers just trying to make themselves famous at Black Hat. Uh, just because it has a famous name, it doesn't mean that it's, it's something you have to worry about. Um, you know, put an SDLC, a secure development lifecycle in place uh, where you're regular doing thing, regularly doing things like code and vulnerability scanning, extensive quality engineering testing per release. Um, and so the reality is that even though many projects upstream um, has some testing um, uh, systems for code submission and merge, um, it's far from ideal when we look at enterprise grade quality and security. Um, upstream projects usually have very narrow testing scope to do to the most simple configurations, definitely not enough to scale. And uh, they do most like basic, basic hardening of servers are applied. Um, and these uh, and more make upstream um, testing good for like first level testing, uh, but definitely not enough uh, to satisfy enterprise needs. So Lucy, you uh, sort of alluded to how organizations are transitioning to public clouds, to hybrid clouds, and the fact that they're just using more open source software. This is a new world. Um, how should we be tackling security differently? Yeah, great question. So, um, as as you stated, you know, as more organizations are moving to um, introducing new technologies that hybrid cloud and cloud technologies brings, um, in addition to what we talked about, uh, uh, making sure that you're consuming open source technology securely, because all of these technologies are open source as well. Uh, many of them, at least, right? If we're talking about like Kubernetes, for example, right? So, um, some of the challenges organizations organizations face include the challenges that organizations face when introducing any new technology, right? So you want to make sure to do things like bring your security teams early in the evaluation process of, of you know which cloud technologies organizations should should adopt. That way you're you're figuring out how to secure hybrid cloud environments um, in a proactive versus bolt-on approach. 
Also, from many times what I've seen uh, organizations struggling with securing cloud and hybrid cloud, uh, we're also struggling on premise. So, for example, misconfigurations, it's a leading cause of uh, breaches out there, including cloud security breaches. However, um, this is this is uh, not really done in a proactive way in many organizations. So, uh, you know, make sure that you have a strategy in place to tackle these low hanging fruit issues like misconfigurations. Um, you know, do it, do things like automated config management and codifying configurations. Uh, make sure that uh, you're doing things like what we talked about, mitigating software supply chain risks by having a strategy to consume open source software uh, securely. You know, have a strategy for data security and managing and protecting and gaining visibility to that data, uh, maintaining that compliance and governance of hybrid cloud because security policies that may make sense in your physical and virtual environment does not make sense all the time in a cloud environment. So you need to evaluate that and you need to codify how you do compliance. Um, you know, you want to manage and have visibility in a hybrid cloud environment to, as well. Do things like integrating your visibility tools into a SIM. Uh, move to identity-centric model. Like uh, AWS CISO has said, you know, perimeter-based security does not work in the cloud. Identity is the new perimeter. Um, you take a hard look at the security tool and, you, and practices you have in place. Uh, while it may make sense, have made sense in a physical virtual environment, it may, it may not make sense in a cloud environment. Like I was at a one customer, healthcare customer who, um, you know, was using a tra traditional tooling to um, manage their containerized environment where containers are coming up and down and up and down and they were trying to track IP addresses, right? That kind of tooling and methodology does not work in a cloud environment. So you need to really take a hard look at the, the tooling and practices you have in place. You want to scale management because there's so many things you have to manage you can't you has to be in an automated manner uh you want to implement an automation strategy everything in the cloud is automated so you need you want to make sure you have an automation strategy that's consistent across the organization and so that you are tackling common human errors such as misconfiguration issues um, you tackle don't forget about security is about uh, not just technology and um, tools it's about people and process so you want to make sure you have a strategy to tackle the people and process problem for securing hybrid cloud um, and by by not just throwing more bodies at the problem um, at, uh, as well so you you mentioned data and I think sometimes we think about co the code in the case of open source a lot but it's also very important to protect and manage that data, particularly in this, a distributed hybrid type of environment. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, definitely. You definitely want to have a strategy for protecting and managing, gaining visibility to that data. Like, so first of all, find out, you know, where does that data actually reside in your environment? Decide, is that the right place for that data to be stored? Another thing, important, important thing to do is to categorize that data, categorize it into low, medium, and highly sensitive. So I've seen actually some organization um, delegate less sensitive data to the hybrid cloud, I'm sorry, to the public cloud, and then highly sensitive data to the uh, their private cloud or their on-premise environment so e but even less sensitive data in the in your prob public cloud should be secured as much as possible you don't want to end up like uh, there's this one big financial institution who put their data on uh, AWS S3 storage um, that led to a data breach right uh, it had all of their sensitive customer data on it and it was actually just posted on a on their personal on the hackers personal github page which the organization never found out until they got a per I, I, um, on anonymous email email from into in their um, that sent sent by security researcher right so you don't want to be in that situation you also um, you know make sure that you're leveraging all of the um, vast security tooling by uh, you know your public cloud service provider uh, for example you know they have tools like data tagging data identification key management service AWS for example has a centralized security console called security hub uh, Take advantage of existing technologies you already have, like, for example, your operating system. Your operating system um, has things like access control lists, for example. Um, uh, for example, we uh, we have in, in um, Enterprise Linux has uh, as access control lists and encryption and data security uh, for uh, to address these data security issues. Look at things like enabling access controls, things like SC Linux, things like encryption for data at rest for a lot with LUX. Look at things like encryption over the wire with TLS and IPsec. Make sure that your secrets are encrypted within the cloud and within your application as well.
Lucy, you mentioned financial services, which is sort of a classic example of a regulated industry. How do those kind of industries and others maintain compliance and governance? Right. In a hybrid cloud, especially, right, you want to look at the policies, um, hybrid cloud and cloud, look at the security policies you already have in place and see if it makes sense in a cloud or a containerized and Kubernetes environment. A classic policy that many organizations in, 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 um, uh, have to comply with um, that's in many security standards out there is, you know, um, you must install antivirus on all your systems. This may make sense in a virtual and physical environment, but it does not make sense in a containerized environment uh, where the container host itself is immutable. Um, also, just like you're doing, um, you should be doing infrastructure and security as code may, for that, you know, to, that for that consistency, that repeatability, that auditability. You want to make sure you do compliance as code as well. Um, that way, you're codifying and automating how, the way you're doing compliance at scale for both um, auditing and remediation. Sort of at the beginning, you mentioned about people and process challenges, especially as it relates to hybrid cloud and processes like DevSecOps. Can you elaborate how organizations should tackle these challenges? Yeah, so it, you know, security is not just about products and technology, right? It's a people, process, and technology problem. That's a famous quote actually from uh, Bruce Schneier, right? Uh, American cryptographer. So you want to tackle the cybersecurity research problem, not just by throwing more bodies uh, at the problem, but tackling it across people, process, technology. Cloud security architects uh, and engineers are probably one of the hardest, actually, they are one of the hardest resources to hire today. Um, and build a cyber, so do things like build a cyber resilient team um, by growing your cybersecurity resources, you know, from within by further developing your existing IT and development per, uh, and uh, IT professionals. Um, develop that culture of cross collaboration, cross training across the organization. Have the developers teach the security teams and vice versa. Have lunch and learns. I've seen some secure some organizations do things like all go to escape rooms together to solve security challenges. You know, uh, also implement that auto consistent automation strategy like we talked about because you want to get rid of those repetitive tasks that, and that lead to human error that lead to problems like misconfigurations, which are the leading causes of breaches. Um, and also all of this, uh, doing all of this is, 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 is actually taking that baby step approach to do DevSecOps success, uh, successfully and actually making it real um, in your organization. So how else can you scale your teams? Uh, more and more, these third-party security vendors are adding things like um, AI and ML technologies to automate things you may be doing in your security operations center. Um, organizations are also leveraging um, third-party service providers, such as cloud-managed service uh, security uh, cloud managed service providers, and also security managed service providers to augment, augment their security and cloud staff as well. Well, thank you, Lucy. Yeah, thanks, Gordon. It was great. Thanks for the conversation.